in a study of 795 randomly selected medical malpractice lawsuits. It was found that 520 of them were dropped or dismissed. Use a 0.01 significance level to test a claim that most medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. Okay, well first let's identify what the claim is of this problem. So we're going to highlight that. So we know that we're using a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that most okay, medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. Now they don't give us a number and are saying most, that means more than an amount, meaning more than 50% because they don't give that to you. So therefore we have to assume that it's 50%. Now we're either going to use the p-value method or the critical value method depending upon what they're asking in the question. So the first thing we need to identify is what is the sample size? Well the sample size is 795. Okay. And then what is the point estimate? Well, the point estimate is taking the value of X over the sample size. Well, the value of X is that 520 of them were dropped or dismissed. So that means we have 520 over the sample size of 795. Now we can either find out what that decimal is or just leave it as a fraction to put it in our formula. Now, since it says to test the claim that most medical practice lawsuits Technically, the claim is saying that P is going to be greater than that 50%. But when we create the null hypothesis, P is going to equal 0 0.50. And the complement Q is going to be 1 minus 0 0.50, which is 0 0.50. Okay, now, before we move any further, we need to check the requirements. Well, we know that 795 were randomly selected. We know that there is a fixed number, 7995 of independent trials. And then the requirements n times p and n times q must be greater than or equal to 5. So we know that 795 times 0.5 is 397.5, which is greater than or equal to 5, which is the same number that we get for n times q. So we know that the three requirements are satisfied. Okay, now we need to state the claim in the opposite of the claim. Well, going back to the beginning part of our claim, it says that most. Now most means it's going to be greater than half because it doesn't give you an amount. So therefore the claim is that P is going to be greater than 0 0.50. Now what is the opposite of that claim? Well, the opposite would then be that the proportion P is less than or equal to 0 0.50. Okay, so now we want to use this information to identify the null in the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So using this information, we know that the null hypothesis always contains the equal sign and then we have the alternative hypothesis. Well the equality is in the opposite of the claim so the null is P is equal to 0 0.20 excuse me not 0 0.20 0 0.50 and therefore the claim is the alternative hypothesis where P is greater than 0 0.50 so now we can go ahead and then answer our first question which is what is the null and what is the alternative? So we know that P is equal to 0 0.5 and it looks like B is our answer where P is greater than 0 0.5. So let's go ahead and check our answer and there is our result. Now we need to identify the test statistic. Before we find a test statistic, let's first decide whether this is a left, right, or two-tailed distribution. Well, the alternative hypothesis tells us that and you can see it says greater than so that means that this is a right-tailed test. Okay, and then what is the significance level alpha from the question? Significance level is using 0 0.01, so we know that alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Okay, now we need to determine what is the test statistic of proportion and when this is the formula z is equal to the point estimate minus the population proportion divided by the square root of p times q over n 
Well, we know that n is the sample size, which is 795. Okay, and then we know that the point estimate was, let's see here, 520 over 795. So 520 over 795. And then we know the value of the population proportion from our null hypothesis is 0 0.50. And the complement Q is 0 0.50. So let's go ahead and plug it into our formula. So we have the point estimate of 520 over 795, because that is our sample. And then we're going to subtract the population proportion of 0 0.50. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 all over n, which is 795. And then we're going to approximate it to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and put this in our calculator. So we have 520 divided by 795 in parentheses and then we're going to subtract 0 0.50 and that gives us what's in the numerator and then we're going to divide that by the square root of the numerator which is 0 0.50 times 0 0.50 and then we're going to divide that by 795 let's go ahead and find that answer so there is our test statistic so let's go ahead and copy that down here. So our test statistic rounded to two decimal places is going to be 8.69. Let's go ahead and put our answer in here. So 8.69. And there is our test statistic. So we're going to be using the p-value method. So since we're using the p-value method, um, we're going to go ahead and use what we have on the left side. So the first thing we need to do is draw our bell curve to find out what that p-value is. We know it's a right-tailed test, and we know that the test statistic is 8.69. So the p-value is what's shaded here. And so in order to find the p-value, it's going to be that test statistic greater than or equal to 8.69 to give us what our p-value is going to be rounded to three decimal places. So let's go ahead and now use StatCrunch to determine that. So opening up StatCrunch. We're going to go to stat calculators and since we are using the Z test statistic, we're going to go to the normal calculator. We want to make sure that we put in greater than or equal to and then put in our test statistic, which is 8.69. And you can see here that we get zero as our P value. So that means to three decimal places is 0, 0.00. So let's go ahead and put in zero for our P value. And there is our result. And now we need to find out what is the conclusion about the null hypothesis. Okay, so in order to find the conclusion, we first need to then determine the p-value compared to the significance level. So when we make a decision here for the p-value, we know the p-value is 0 0.000. And we know that our significance level from the question is 0 0.01. And therefore, the p-value is less than 0 0.01. So if you notice here, we reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. And we fail to reject the null if the p-value is greater than alpha. Well, we know it's less than. So therefore, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now before we create our conclusion now, we have to come back here and look at the claim. Well, the claim has the uh, greater than, which does not include the equality. So when we select which option that we're going to choose, okay, we're going to choose either the first or the second one because it does not include the equality, which means that we can eliminate the last two. Okay, 
Now, it says that the original claim does not include equality, and we rejected the null hypothesis, so we can eliminate the third one. So therefore, this is going to be our conclusion. So we would say that reject the null, and then there is sufficient evidence to support the claim with the original claim. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and that is because the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level alpha. So we're going to select B, and there is our result. Now it says, what is the conclusion? Well, the conclusion means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So we would say that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that most medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. So that's going to be B. Check our answer, and there is our result.